Over the past five years or so, Hyundai has slowly but surely succeeded in climbing toward the upper echelons of the car market, looking to rub elbows with the likes of, well, if not Audi and BMW, then definitely Volkswagen and Ford. And Hyundai reckons that its fourth generation Santa Fe is closer than ever to appealing to those premium car buyers. And you gotta admit, it does look the part, but the Santa Fe is a large seven seat family car at the end of the day. And the Santa Fe earned its name in the UK for its dependability and value and not its VIP status. So it will have to tick certain rudimentary boxes as well. So let's take a look. So let's just get this out of the way, shall we? Is this interior up there with the best in class in terms of quality? Well, no. Not quite. I'd say it's more on par with the likes of the Peugeot 5008 rather than something from Lexus. But hang on, hang on. That doesn't mean this isn't a lovely interior. The designers have clearly thought long and hard about what materials go where, with almost no scratchy plastics in any obvious areas. And all these little trimmings, they're... Well, they're not leather, but they are very nice. They occupy that space between family friendliness and luxury quite well. And the overall design in here is of a similar ilk. There's just the right amount of buttons down here for convenience, but it's not overly cluttered. And I actually really like this display behind the steering wheel. Reminds me of a Volvo, actually. Now, one thing the Santa Fe certainly doesn't skimp on is equipment, something Hyundai is well known for, with all Santa Fe models getting a seven inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. You also get dual zone climate control, cruise control, parking sensors, and a reversing camera. And this touchscreen system is so incredibly easy to use from going through DAB stations to connecting your phone via Bluetooth. My one small criticism is that the sat nav doesn't have pinch and swipe functionality. Now the mid-range premium trim is where things start to get a bit posh. And I'm gonna to refer to my piece of paper for this one because there is a lot to go over. Now the premium trim adds a larger eight inch touchscreen with sat nav, added chrome on the outside, electrically adjustable driver and passenger seats, heated front and rear seats and the heated steering wheel, electric boot opening and a 10 speaker Krell sound system. And the flagship premium SE trim, which is what we've got, tries to elevate the Santa Fe a few extra inches towards its luxury rivals as it adds cornering headlights, ventilated front seats, memory function driver seat, a surround view parking system and a panoramic glass roof. See, spoiled for choice. So it's very clear that from an equipment point of view, this is a very family friendly car, but it's also pretty practical up here. You've got a decent sized glove box. You've got a shelf here that's actually quite useful for once. And you've got loads of storage under this armrest. One weird thing that's slightly disappointing is that these door bins are a bit awkward to access due to the bulging speakers and the fact that they're quite narrow, which for a large seven seat car is a bit disappointing. Now, this is where the Santa Fe really goes toe to toe with its big luxury rivals. Space back here is just brilliant. Leg room is ample as is headroom, even more so if you don't go for this glass roof. And there's, there's just a sense of relaxation back here. And speaking of, these seats actually recline, which is a very nice touch. And they slide back and forth to accommodate people in those further seats, but we'll come on to them in a minute. And moving around back here is just really easy to do. You can move around easily thanks to this nice flat floor. There's just enough elbow and leg room to your passengers either side. And I also like the fact that you get this little storage cubby here and two USB chargers and a plug underneath. So people back here can charge the phones. Other nice features include the heated seat function. Very nice. This fold down armrest with two cup holders and you've got a bit of storage in the back of these seats here. Just like the front though, one slightly disappointing thing is the size of the door bins again, but that, that is a very minor point in the grand scheme of things. Now, onto those rear seats. So, folding these seats down, very easy to do, just pull a lever here, but there's no avoiding that you will have to do a bit of climbing to get in. And once you're back here, your knees do sit quite high and well, headroom is limited. I can just about sit up straight. So it's clear that these seats should probably be reserved for kids. But saying that, that slide and bench I showing you earlier does allow you to find a nice compromise between those sat in the middle and those sat in the back when it comes to legroom. A few nice features worth mentioning back here. You've got a cool little storage cubby here. You've got two cup holders and your own 
aircon control. Very fancy. One other thing worth mentioning, I know I mentioned that you do have to climb in this side, but this seat that's just out the way of the camera does have a nice electronically folding pop and lock kind of feature, which means, okay, you still have to sort of meander around the seat, but it is a nice alternative if you don't fancy climbing. Right, let's climb out. Coming around to the boot, which opens electronically, you've got a nice flat load lip, very good start. And a loose space isn't great back here with all the seats in place, you can fit a few soft bags, which is good, but the real impressive stuff starts when you start to fold these down, which is very easy to do. Just pull the ropes here, and then you get up to 547 liters of storage space. Oh, but there's more. You can fold them down by these buttons here. You might need to give that one a bit of encouragement, but once they're down, you get a nice smooth run right to the front and up to 1,625 liters of storage space, which is similar to a small van. And I like the fact that you get a, a nice fabric cover to hide these seats, a bit like a, a rug over a wine cellar, which just I don't know, makes things look a bit more clean cut and will stop dust going in between those seats. The only problem with this is that it doesn't really go anywhere when you're not using it. I mean, you've got underfloor storage here, which brilliantly hides this removable and adjustable parcel shelf, but yeah, fabric cover doesn't go anywhere. So, I thought I'd leave those back seats folded just to give you a bit more perspective on how much space is back there. Looks strange, doesn't it? Anyway, we know the Santa Fe is practical. You can see that now. What's it like to drive? Well, there's no avoiding that it's a hefty seven-seater. If you chuck it around bends, you will get a bit of body roll. But honestly, unless you, you're really gunning it around a bend, you're not gonna notice. The steering doesn't really encourage sporty driving either. It can be a little on the vague side and on the heavy side. I actually like the slightly weightier feel, but hey, this is a seven-seat family-orientated SUV. You're very unlikely to be chucking it around anyway. And on that, comfort all round is pretty spot on in the Santa Fe. It just loves to cruise, with wind and road noise being muted very successfully. And it soaks up most bumps, yeah, effortlessly. Although I would avoid the large 19-inch wheels on the premium SE trim, as they do tend to send a few shudders through the cabin if you hit potholes or large bumps. So maybe opt for the 17 or 18-inch wheels instead. One thing that does actually annoy me a bit refinement wise is the vibration and the grumble you get from the diesel engine when idling in traffic. It's just really noticeable, maybe because the rest of the Santa Fe's ride is so refined. Speaking of that rumble, there is only one engine currently available with the Santa Fe, and that's a 2.2 litre, 200 horsepower diesel engine. Although you can choose between two wheel and four wheel drive and manual and auto. We've got the four wheel drive auto. And acceleration and power delivery all around in this engine is really good, really impressive. All the power you're ever gonna need, really. And especially when mated to this eight speed automatic gearbox, it's just a joy to drive. I mean, braking, accelerating again, this, this gearbox just keeps up with everything really well. It's definitely one of the better autos out there. Now, fuel economy wise, you're looking at anything from 30 to 40 miles per gallon. The higher end being achievable if you're gentle with the accelerator, with the official average quoted at just under 39 miles per gallon. And with CO2 of 164 grams per kilometer, you're looking at a BAK tax rate of 37% for 2019 and 2020. It is worth noting, however, that Hyundai plans to introduce hybrid and plug-in hybrid versions of the Santa Fe soon. So if the BIK and fuel economy figures don't quite match your budget, then it might be worth waiting around a bit. So the Santa Fe has got the practicality side of things down. As a family car, it's spot on. The premium SE trim that we've got may be a bit overkill for most though, being an 8K premium over the standard model. That's 40 grand. But it does give the opportunity for a bit of indulgence, and that's what high-end cars are all about, isn't it? It may not be quite at that premium level yet, but when you consider its practicality, kit, and impressive five-year warranty, it is an appealing proposition. But for some, 
it just hovers in that awkward limbo between affordable and expensive, with the flagship Skoda Kodiak and Peugeot 5008 models being priced around about the same as the Santa Fe's mid-range trim. Yeah.